So in 3.8, we're going to start division of fractions. Now, we actually don't divide fractions. We multiply by the reciprocal instead, and that's why the title is what it is. So let's see that. Right, 12 times 1 third, we learned very first lesson of this unit, that 12 times 1 third is the same as 12 divided by 3. 12 divided by 3 is 4, and 12 times 1 third is also 4. Both of those have the same answer. 15 times 1 fifth is the same as 15 divided by 5. Both of these are 3. 20 times 2 fifths, well, let's do that. So I'm going to put the 20 over 1. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 20 divided by 5 is 4. This is 4 over 1 times 2 over 1, which is 8 over 1, which is 8. So what is 20 divided by 5 halves? Well, so far, I've been saying that the one on the left, the one on the right have the same answer. Is this one also 8? Is times 2 fifths, 20 times 2 fifths, the same as 20 divided by 5 halves? Turns out, yes. What's going on, even, right? What is 1 fifth flipped over? It's 5. What is 1 third flipped over? It's 3. It's turns out that division and multiplying by the reciprocal of a number, the number flipped over, have the same answer always in all cases. And you can see two fifths flipped over here, five halves, but it's just like the ones above it. Five flipped over is one fifth. So hence, we don't divide fractions. By the way, this is 12 divided by two fifths. I talked about the fact that you can have a fraction and a fraction. 12 divided by two fifths is the same as 12 times the fraction flipped over, 5 halves. Well, when we flip over a number or a fraction, it's called the reciprocal. It's also called the multiplicative inverse. All right, there is an additive inverse, which is the opposite. We'll learn, talk about that more in another lesson. But here we're going to do the multiplicative inverse, which is just flip the fraction over. So the reciprocal of 4 ninths is 9 fourths. Now look at your paper. Hopefully you did not write equals, because those are not equal, right? And when you do that, that means you think that equal sign means here comes the answer. Don't ever do that. It never meant that. 4 ninths and 9 fourths are not equal. They are the same number flipped over. But the, and that is called a reciprocal or multiplicative inverse. So what is the reciprocal of 1 eighth? Yes, it's 8 over 1. But how do we write 8 over 1? 8. So what's the reciprocal of 5? Well, 5 is 5 over 1. So when you flip it over, it's 1 fifth. That's how it works. So what's the reciprocal of 1 17th? Flip it over, yes, it's 17 over 1, but it's 17. So dividing and multiplying by the reciprocal are always equivalent. What's 20 divided by 2? 10. So dividing and multiplying by the same number flip over, multiplying by the reciprocal, always gets you the same answer. Now, is Multiplying by one half easier than dividing by two? No, it's not. But we will need it for fractions. So 25, four divided by four is six. Dividing by four is the same as multiplying by the four flipped over, one fourth. Right, four divided by four is one. 24 divided by four is six. So for fractions, we're gonna need to do that. There's no good way to think about, right, if you're taking one seventh of a gallon and, and figuring out how many half gallons fit in there, right? That's what's going on here is it say one half, one seventh divided by one half. How many one halves fit in one seventh? The, the fastest way to do it is to leave the first number. The first number will never change. Doesn't matter if it's a fraction, negative does not matter. It will never change. You will change this division to some form of multiplication, the dot, time symbol, whatever. You will flip over the second number. Now you can flip that over and make it two or two over one, doesn't matter. And then you follow the rules for multiplying. There's no canceling. One times two is two, seven times one 
it is two sevenths. Half of one, all right, half into one seventh, all right, goes two out of seven. Three elevenths divided by two fifths. So you leave the first number, you multiply, you find the reciprocal, you flip it over, you look for canceling if you have it. We don't have any here. Three times five is 15, 11 times two is 22. Three elevenths divided by two fifths is 15 20 seconds. Negative five ninths divided by three, leave the first number, multiply by the reciprocal of three one third. Still no canceling. We're one negative in the problem, we're leaving that. Five times one is five, nine times three is 27. It is negative five twenty-sevenths. Again, you can only cancel multiplication of fractions, nothing else. So that's not multiplication of fractions, that's division of fractions. We're gonna change it though to multiply by the reciprocal of five thirds, three fifths. Can we cancel those three? It looks like we could have, but we can't because they end up side to side and you get nine tenths. So we leave the first number the same no matter what and we multiply by the reciprocal. Now we can cancel those fives and it's four sevenths. I highly recommend writing this down. Do not skip over that step. People try to do it in their head and then they mess it up all the time. All right, so this has two negatives. Hopefully that tells you right away it's gonna be positive. I'm gonna leave the first number the same and then I'm gonna multiply by the reciprocal. Make sure I write the negative again. So 7 fifteenths. Now I feel like I have some canceling. I sure do. Seven divided by seven is one. 28 divided by seven is four. Five divided by five is one. 15 divided by five is three. Two negatives make a positive. This is negative one fourth times negative one third which is positive one twelfth, right? You just multiply across. One times one is one, four times three is 12, one twelfth. This is called a complex fraction. It's a fraction in a fraction. It's totally allowed. What this is, is one third divided by one sixth. Another way, and we're actually gonna use this quite a bit this year. Now, once you realize that, then it's the same thing as one third times six over one. Canceling now applies and you get two. One third over one sixth, yes, you're, that's the way you say that. Or you could say a one third divided by one sixth is two. One sixth goes into one third two times. Four divided by one twelfth. So four divided by one twelfth is the same as four times 12. So that is equal to 48. Four over one twelfth is 48. Negative two fifths times six. First of all, you should realize it's going to be a negative answer. And it doesn't matter where you put the one negative. That's negative two fifths divided by six, which is negative two fifths times one sixth. All right? Be careful of this. All right? It's times one sixth. It's divided by six times one sixth. We got canceling here. And so it's negative one fifteenth. So let's practice. So three fifths divided by four fifth divided by five fourths is three fifths times four fifths. You cannot cancel the fives. It's twelve twenty fifths. One eighteenth divided by one sixth is one eighteenth times six. Now we can cancel, and the answer is one third. This is two ninths. It's the top divided by the bottom, by the way. Two ninths divided by one ninth which is two ninths times nine, cancel, which is two. Seven thirtieths divided by one fifth is the same as seven thirtieths times five, cancel, and you get seven sixths or one and one sixth, and both of those are correct. Division by five, dividing some number, any number divided by five, and multiplying by one fifth always give the same answer. And the answer to that is always, right? They always do, okay? And if you're thinking about zero, which would be a good, if you were thinking about a sometimes, you should think about zero, right? Zero divided by five, that's equals zero. That's not the one that's undefined. 
zero in the front is allowed. And zero times one fifth is also zero. So that would be the one I would check. Is that also always true? Yes. Division by five and multiplying by one fifth always give the same answer. Good luck on the